Hey guys, White Monk here, and today we're going to be going over some digital painting. The anime coloring style explained. Hopefully you guys enjoy my perspective, especially as a Polish author. Apple Black Volume 1 and 2, manga volumes available for pre-order. And in fact, the character we're going to be using as a model in this tutorial is a character from my series Apple Black, as well as the illustration being a cover for a manga chapter in Volume 2. Some of you might be familiar with this character as I've done a tutorial on designing his character from scratch in a separate video. You can go check that out. With all that said, look out! So usually you want to start with a thumbnail, kind of give you an idea, a blueprint of how the rest of the illustration is going to look. I went with a character gracing the cover that is going to be a focus of the chapter itself. It has a lot of action, so I wanted a chapter cover that reflected that. So the character is in this dynamic pose, reaching out to the audience, kind of grabbing their attention a little bit. Point is, you want your rough sketch. How you get there is really up to you. Now from this, depending on how fast or how much time you have, you can kind of jump straight into the inking and kind of be making adjustments as you go on. I have a separate video that touches on that and how you can speed up production if you kind of skip a step and jump straight into the inking. But here we have a little more time. So from the really rough sketch, I'm going to do a cleaner sketch and then I'll ink over that. A lot of this is going to depend on your art style, whether it be how you draw, but also part of your production. Even when it boils down to the inking itself, you have some inking styles that are rougher than others, some line weights that are thicker than others. The line weight you'd find on most anime, say, is much thinner than, say, what you would find on Attack on Titan, season one especially, how it's colored. There are various ways of doing these things, but it is nice to kind of understand that one way where it's always recognized as Japanese inspired. If you're enjoying this video so far, please do all the engagement stuff, like, subscribe, those help a great deal. The channel is in dire need. Let's get it to 500K, please. From the sketch, I changed some things, like the character didn't have his cloak on, and with the more refined sketch, I decided to throw that on there, because I felt it was more appropriate based off of what's happening in the chapter. Again, if you want to be able to read that, make sure you pre-order Apple Black Volume 2. And once I'm done with that, you can see me going in with the inking. And like I said, it's up to you, your style. I like to go for something smooth like most anime out there, but with the right amount of edge, especially for still images that are not going to be animated. And you just want to make sure you've thoroughly inked. And the goal here, I'm trying to make sure all the lines touch and there aren't that many gaps. That way it'll be easy for me to use the fill tool or the magic wand to select areas of the drawing that I want to fill in with color. Not necessarily a tutorial on how to draw dynamic poses, but I'll be happy to do more of those. You can just let me know in the comments below and I can have separate videos on how I come up with poses like this. When you're done inking, I like to set the mood, if you will, and that's just me creating a new layer, forming a silhouette for the whole character and filling it with a color that is close to the hue that the environment is in. If you're in a red room, then I would have picked like a dark red. But in this case, I'm going with a darkish blue because he's kind of outside, kind of not in some kind of generator field, but it's blue skies. And so that will kind of reflect on him a little bit. Then I reduce the opacity and make sure that the layer is on linear burn. It doesn't really matter what step you do first, but after that, then I try to lay down the flat colors. Here, when you're filling in, you can use the magic wand. You can manually fill it in with the brush. There's so many ways to fill it in. Just make sure you get all the spots. Now we're going to painting the background. Please note that none of these have to necessarily be in order. Once you understand how layers work, you can always move the layers around afterwards. Sometimes backgrounds, especially painting backgrounds and having that painterly background style that you find in most anime can be very daunting and intimidating. I just want to get out of the way. So on a separate layer on its own, I find a color that is say, if the place is kind of like a metal gray, I'm gonna pick a metal gray, but again, I'm keeping in mind that hue of the sky hitting that gray. So I'm gonna pick a color that is gray, but maybe has a little tint of blue in it. It might even still be hard to see. Consciously, I'm trying to. And I always try to make sure the parts and surfaces of all the parts in the backgrounds, even though it might be the same color, just slightly different so that the surfaces are identifiable. So sometimes some surfaces will be lighter than others just to show the separation as well as, you know, light is probably hitting one surface better than the other. So maybe one side would be lighter than the other, or maybe there's a different light hitting an another surface. So rather than that blue hint or tint going in my mind, maybe if it's a yellow light hitting it, then maybe I'm thinking a little bit more yellowish. It's kind of up to you. Painting backgrounds, I'll be honest with you, is very, very difficult, especially when you're just starting out. There's a lot of stuff you have to be thinking about, especially when it comes to color. So one of my best recommendations I can think of for you guys is to actually attempt painting directly from reference. And a lot of professionals do this as well. And the more you do that, the more comfortable you are painting in general, 
and the easier it is for you to pick up on certain things uh, the way light kind of interacts with whatever object or buildings or uh, freaking forest whatever you're painting you tend to learn a whole lot more about light and how things are lit up and so on so it's not something that you'd be able to just pick up in one video you kind of have to practice and learn over time but hopefully watching me do this you can kind of get a sense of a little bit of a observational tutorial maybe picking up on the little things that i'm doing and seeing how it can be done and even though i don't think i'm the greatest digital painter when it comes to backgrounds i think i did a pretty decent job with this illustration we're going painterly because most anime style backgrounds tend to be that but again especially if you've seen several series they don't always have to be that you don't always see backgrounds that don't say have line work to them sometimes they do sometimes the line work might be pencily they're various styles because these are different artists handling that different artists have different styles so it's not always going to be the same approach to doing anything it's kind of like a metallic Dexter's lab, Dexter's laboratory generator field kind of space. So you're going to see a lot of diagonal lines. And so I have this completely dark one setting the path I'm going to fill in. And then I have a lighter color just to show some volume, just to show a different surface and how the floor is not completely flat. And I try to do the same thing with more lines within, you can call it, say, a gut. Again, I'm not trying to be too perfect with it. You don't always have to be. Not all professional paintings are like completely technical to the T. Sometimes it can just be fun and you'll be painting and having fun with it. You can see this box here. Maybe it's like a some kind of circuit box or something like that. And I'm creating some darker and lighter surfaces just to show that it pops up from the floor. And I'm also thinking about what parts the light will be hitting versus others. And you kind of just keep rendering until you get what you want. Obviously much easier if you're working with lines, but sometimes it's a challenge to try and do it without. Again, it's a lot of like knowing what surfaces will be lighter than others and kind of just gives the whole thing that shape, knowing where the surface kind of goes in, pops out, protrudes, whatever the case may be. And I just do the same thing for the rest of the painting. See, part of the wall is not just a complete flat color or the same thing the whole time. I want like a little caution yellow on the edges. And I didn't just go with a bright yellow. I went with a dark yellow that kind of still blended with that gray, but just popped up enough to show up as yellow, where it's not distracting or oversaturated. Even the dark lines are just a much darker yellow versus just black. So you gotta be very cautious with the colors you're choosing. And I think that comes with a lot of practice overall like with the understanding of color. I'm gonna draw a bigger generator there. Again, it's gonna be a little trickier. But again, once you have that little decent understanding of digital painting and surfaces and how it gets lit up and stuff like that, it will get easier. The background is literally drawing from the background in the actual chapter where the character Obi actually battles a very annoying couple. I think it's one of the more fun fights that I've created in the series. And I really hope you guys go check it out. Again, it'll be in Apple Black Volume 2, Chapter 15. After drawing skies so many times, you gotta find that nice gradient blend for the blue in the skies. I still want it to be a little dark and not a bright blue just because he's going to be doing some electricity stuff and so he's going to be emitting light himself and I kind of want to darken the area around him a little bit so he pops almost like right before lightning strikes or something. Then I turn back that mood and you can see now he fits at least the sky a little more. The background doesn't 100% fit but we'll get to that because then I'll have to do another setting the mood for the background itself but maybe that will be a separate layer where I'm getting that blue linear burn, reducing the opacity, not having it be completely flat, giving it a little bit of gradient and making sure and clipping that to the background layer. So toying around with doing the opposite with light coming from the bottom in a separate layer. You play around with blending modes and adjustment layers. Those also help you, especially with digital art software. Once you kind of have a decent grasp on those adjustment layers, blending modes, layers in general, filters and things like that, and when to use them, you're on the right track. And here I wanted a really, really light green, almost like green is kind of his electricity color. So it's almost like he's tapping into the generator field and lighting it all up himself as well. And so you have all these green lights that are essentially lights that are on the generator places that represent whatever they're supposed to represent, whatever the mechanics is. And they're all lit up, makes everything look a little bit more techno mumbo jumbo which is what i'm going for and i make sure this layer is above pretty much everything background wise so it really pops after that you double click on the layer if you're using photoshop and then you give it an outer glow pick a color you want and play around with the settings so you get 
the right amount of glow you're going for. Now I can go back to finishing the character. I have a, I have a layer above almost everything with an almost white, but with a tint of green, almost like some of the green in the background is kind of shining on his eyes. I turn back that mood layer and maybe have a duplicate of it. I create a mask and then maybe create a gradient, making that layer transparent from the top, but as it goes to the bottom is becoming clearer. So you have a mood that kind of covers the whole thing with that bluish tint. And then you have another one, but this one kind of has a gradient thing going on. And then another mood layer where I'll kind of erase everything because I want to keep the colors consistent, but I'll erase everything on that layer and then manually fill it in, fill in the spots on the character that I want to show and have shading for. You can do this while all the colors are on and all the layers are on, or to make things easier to see, you can turn it all off and just kind of fill in the spots or create the spots that you want to have filled in obviously based off a light source and then once you're done you can turn everything back on Now at this point, for most anime, you only have these parts, right? But sometimes, especially for a still illustration, you can add more vivid dynamic lighting to it. So here I create another layer, and this time the layer blending mode could be color dodge or add, add dodge or add glow, whatever. And here we're just adding in highlights. I'm still going with a slight green because you have all this green light around him, maybe coming from the floor. And so I have that lit, you can see in, on his knee, a little bit of that. And I just put it in all the places that I deem appropriate. I do the same thing, but this time maybe with a blue and this time with the lower opacity, maybe even duller because it's not like straight up light hitting the character. This is just a little bit of the blue reflection from the skies, but this is also in a separate layer, maybe color dodge or add, add glow, depends on you. You find the blending mode that works. And then I'm adding that just to give the character a little bit, a little bit more oomph, a little bit more volume, let it pop more. And then here I'm putting the strings for his, you can say electric yo-yo. That's his wand, his wand. The name of his wand is Shango Chuku. And that's also, you know, part of what I explained in the video where I did his character design from scratch. You can go check that out again. But that's gonna be lit up as well. And this is a separate layer, right? On this layer where I've drawn, I've drawn the string, it's on a very light green, but then I also have it with a, an outer glow. And the way you do that again is double click on the layer and then go to outer glow. <laughs> and then on auto glow, you can play around the settings on how exactly you want it to blow. Here, I want to show some electricity stuff. Ah, he's feeding from the fields as well. Now I can go back to the background and even add a little bit more, clipping it to that background. Now with a greenish mood, where it's like a really dark green, reduced opacity, linear burn. And I'm going with an airbrush, painting around him, showing, okay, the light, the light's coming from him, so I'm shading around. And I also like the effect that that's having on the background as well. When you're doing this too, you can then purposely shade, you can actually put more emphasis on some parts, like you see where the light is hitting that little box on the bottom left, and how that's casting a shadow behind it from this new layer we've created. And little things like that just make everything pop, feel more alive, even look realistic to a degree. And I'm having touches like that all over the illustration. After that, I go to filters, I go for a radial blur, play around with the settings there to get what you want. You make copies of the layers and merge them. And that's the one you edit. That way you still have access to the old layers. With this radial blur, I could put a mask on it, make certain parts transparent. Those parts wouldn't have the blur on it. And then, you know, the eye can focus on the character and those points like the face. And then one of the last things I do to kind of soften the lines and make everything feel more like that anime screenshot is to select all the layers, duplicate it, and maybe even duplicate the duplicate. Make sure you merge the duplicates. And then right at the top, I select the whole illustration, put a Gaussian blur, 30%, change the blending mode to lighten, and then to reduce the opacity to about 30 or 40. The higher the opacity, the more it looks like an anime flashback or something like that. Because I'm dealing with electricity a little bit, I wanted to have a little bit of a glitch effect and to do that, again, you select all the layers, merge, and then pull it to the top. Perfect. And then go to channels. This is called chromatic aberration. So on channels, you hit green or you pick the color you want, but I hit green. And then once you've hit green, you then hit the I for, you know, visibility on the RGB, but make sure green is the only one selected. 
select the whole illustration, then Command T or Control T, depending on what you're using. And then you shift the whole illustration to one side. Then you're gonna get this nice 3D effect. I only want a very subtle one to get the effect that I'm going for, but it's fun to play with if you know what you're doing. And after that, boom, this is the illustration. The new Apple Black Quarto Book Deal Chapter 15 cover. Painted background like anime, cell shaded character design like anime. And hopefully you guys enjoy this illustration, this video. And you can learn a couple things here and there that you can then apply to your own work. For two and a half people that made it to the end of this video, I oh, thank you. Don't forget to like this video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Holy Ghost, smash that subscribe button and hit the bell so you stay notified each time I upload absolutely anything. Turn on all notifications. Everything you could possibly need will be linked in the description. Thanks for watching. It's Manga, and I'm Audi 9000.